head. Don't lose your head. I want to look at this passage, brothers and sisters, because as I, um, I shared a little bit on this past Wednesday night, and I'm going to cut across the field. Um, I shared this past Wednesday night a little bit of, of this uh, passage because when you look at all of the armors of God, it is not for me today to come and uh, give you some type of lecture or give you some type of new information on the armors of God. Uh, what it is, uh, though I want to expose this passage because what the verbiage in verse number 17 kind of changes. If you notice verbiage in verse number 17, it will say in the original King James, well, take unto you the helmet of salvation. Uh, this verbiage has not been used in the previous uh, armors that are talked about. This verbiage is only used with the helmet. As if you've gotten dressed up at your mom's house and it's cold outside, you've gotten dressed, you got your boots on, you got... Uh, uh, your thermals on, you got your coat on, uh, and you got your scarf on, but you're about to run and dash out the door because you're in a hurry, and your mom or grandmother looks back at you and says, hey, 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 checks you out. Take that hat and put that hat on as if you can be fully dressed but missing one major piece. And so, therefore, the word to you is take unto you the helmet of salvation because you can mess around and leave the helmet off not understanding the battle that you are about to face. And a lot of us today are losing the battle because you've dressed up from the, from the feet all the way up to your neck. But when it gets down to your neck and above, you are absent of a helmet. You are, watch this, Fighting the devil with a soft head. And fighting the devil with a soft head, you're always going to lose. Because you're writing anything down, write down my first nugget of notes. You cannot fight the devil with a soft head. Because, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the devil is really not so much interested in um, uh, the other parts of your body. The, the, the devil is more interested in your head, your head, your head. And, and, and maybe that's maybe a lot of our problems and what we've faced so far that we've been fighting the devil or we've been in battles or we've been in struggles or we've been up against different obstacles and situations and ain't got nothing on your head. And not having anything on your head makes you vulnerable for any tactic of the devil. See, ladies and gentlemen, when you look at verse number 12 of this passage, verse number 12, uh, uh, if not verse number 12, verse number 11 talks about the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil. That word wiles simply means the strategies of the devil and the methods of the devil. That you are so powerful and you are such a threat to Satan that if you're under any type of attack or under any type of heaviness or under any type of battle or affliction in your life, what is interesting about the devil is the devil just don't throw things on you or he just don't jump at you. The wiles of the devil suggest that he strategizes what he throws in your way. That, that he actually has to strategize, he actually has to think about it and then decide what method is he going to use in order to trip you up or take you down or to make you crash and crumble in the midst of the situation you're presently in. And ladies and gentlemen, so it is the wiles of the, and when you're dealing with the wiles of the devil or the trickery of the devil, and I don't know who I'm talking to here today uh, because I need to check the crowd to see who in the world is dealing with the wiles of the devil, the trickery of the devil, the strategy. Let me see your hand. I need to know if I'm preaching to anybody. Now, if it's not you, if it's not you, it's okay. Let me say that again. If it's not you that is up against or have seen lately the wiles, the trickery, or the strategies of the devil coming at you, that's all right because the devil ain't going after nobody who ain't got nothing to get. Okay. If you ain't got nothing valuable in you, he ain't coming at you. No robber, according to, uh, according to John 10 and 10, if the thief come at the thief, the kill, steal, and destroy. If that be true, Sister, Sister, Sister Richmond, if that's true, well then no robber robs a house that's empty. 
No, 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 no burglar or, or, or no, nobody, no thief robs a house or a dwelling that has nothing valuable in it. And the only reason why you're up against what you're up against, feeling the pressure you're feeling right now and the pressure and the wiles of the devil is because you got something that is valuable and something worth stealing. Why don't you tell yourself, I got something worth stealing. I got some, amen, I ain't talking about your money. I ain't talking about your money because I know the first thing you're going to think about is money and stealing. No, 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 no. It's something greater. It's something greater. And I would give you the points uh, on the day, but, but I'm, I'm just going to run right through it. it it's not, it's, it's something greater. It's something greater from you that the devil wants. And, and you missed it. You missed it for so long. You've been protecting your stuff for so long until you have been misdirected to think that the stuff you are protecting ain't even the stuff the devil really wants. His trickery on your life has nothing to do with your stuff. It has to do with your substance. And a lot of y'all missing me right now because you can't figure out the difference between your stuff and your substance. You don't know the difference between your stuff and your, stuff, your car, and your, your, your car, your house, your money, your investments, your job. That ain't the stuff the devil is after. Because in the text, he tells you, I need you to put on the whole armor of God because I'm trying, God says, to protect my investment in you. That, that, I, I got some stuff that I gave you. Huh? And, and see, see, because, let me go back to this one more time. I, keep, I, I have to go back to this because there's somebody on this side. I keep feeling you that don't understand what I'm saying. See, I have to go back to this kind of stuff because, be, be, because see, what I've discovered is I can have stuff and still not be fulfilled. Oh, boy. So you can have stuff and still not be happy. I want to give a shout out to all of y'all who say, you know, if I was rich, I wouldn't have these problems. No, if you wouldn't feel with the Holy Ghost, I can't get no help in here. See, see, you're focusing your life on stuff and trying to build stuff, trying to get more stuff. And then you get more stuff. You, some of y'all right now can go buy more stuff and it won't be long before the stuff you done bought, you'll discover, does not fulfill and and, and, and itch or, or satisfy the need that you have deep down inside of you because stuff ain't what the devil is after. What the Lord says, when I told you to put on the whole armor of God, every piece of armor came with some substance. And if you want to intimidate the devil in this season, you ought to protect the substance that comes with the armor. Y'all don't hear nothing I'm saying. I say you need to protect the stuff that comes with the armor. What is the stuff, Brown? It's right there in the text. Y'all don't see it, but I'm going to show it to you. Verse number 14 says what you need to protect in the season that the devil wants to rob from you and take from you. The first thing you need to protect in verse number 14 is truth. 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 Look at that. Verse number 14. He says, so put the band or the loins girt about with truth. There's a belt to put on, but stop paying attention to the belt. Because it's not the belt that the Lord has put investments in. It is what the belt represents, which is truth. He said, and the devil would love to keep you living a lie. There's a lot of folk that left this church because they couldn't live their truth. You wouldn't let them be who they are so we can help them to where they need to be. Amen. I'm coming out the judgmental spirit right now. And there's some people in here right now who cannot be and live their truth and live in truth of who God really made them to be because you have because they have allowed you to keep them bound, bound by this fictitious image of what a church person is supposed to look like. I'm coming after the devil right now. I'm coming after the devil right now. And so you better be glad my jeans today on a third Sunday were not clean and, and flowing on me the way I wanted them to because I would have been in jeans today just for the purpose of showing the devil that it don't make no difference what you got on, it's what you got in. I can't get no help in here. I can't get no help in here. A lot of us are dressed up mess, living a dressed up life. 
If I stay in here another hour preaching, you'll be trying to loosen your necktie. If I stay here another hour preaching, you'll be trying to come out them shoes because that ain't you. That ain't who you really are. That's somebody, a representative of who you want people to think you are. But he said, and the devil is robbing you. He said, because what I want to protect in your life is truth. And you better protect truth at all costs. Look at your neighbor and say, protect your truth. Protect, protect your truth. Protect your truth. Some of y'all can't protect your truth because you won't be truthful. You won't be truthful. You won't be truthful. You want everybody to think you live with a halo over your head 27 hours a day. Huh? I mean, and, and I mean, and I, you know, you know, I, 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 used, I used to struggle. Used to struggle. Now, I used to struggle. Used to struggle. That, you know, because church folk are vicious. They, I mean, they, I mean, y'all are some of the damnable people I've ever seen in my life. You condemn and, and damn everything to the place the way as people will, 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 I mean, my God, I was like, man, so, I mean, when, when can I tell people the truth? When can you be truthful with people? When can you ever be transparent with people so you can be ministered to? Some of folk, you can't tell them that you cuss often because you have a, a temper problem. I say, y'all look at you, son. See, see. Some people you can't tell I ride with a bottle of Chirac in my trunk because every now and then when my weight gets so heavy, I need to get a sip or something. Okay, so white look ain't your thing. I mean, Hennessy, whatever, man. Cognac. See, and you get so judged, you get so judged. Because if I can be honest with you about my ills and about my pains and be truthful about where I really am, you can lead me to where I need to be. Oh, God. I gotta watch what I wear to church. I mean, and, and let me tell you something. You know, let me tell you what. Let me tell you something. That's, let me let me share something with you that you really can't handle. But I'm gonna let you do what you want to do with it. And if you read Ephesians six, before you get to verse number ten, five through nine talks about slavery. Now this ain't on my script, but let me go and preach it. It talks about slavery. It talks about slaves and masters what's interesting to me is even when it come down to dressing in church about the way and I ain't saying come do what you want to do but what has disturbed me over the years is that the realization is this the same spirit that the slave master used on the slaves in order to keep them in control and under oppression is actually the same spirit that we use in the church or the old preacher use in order to keep you under control because that's what they were taught. So what they'll do is take a scripture and say, well, there's a scripture about the bridegroom where, that where, when they went to the wedding and there was no, uh, and they were there not dressed in the right garment and they were not dressed properly, they couldn't make it in. And so that means you're supposed to wear this and that and this and that to church. Because that's how y'all were taught. And that's the slave mentality you're trying to put on the next generation. And they were taught that from a slave mentality. To take scripture and say, uh, 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 slaves obey your masters. Because this is what the Bible say. Huh? And so the slaves would sit back. We better do what they say. That's what the Bible say. And that's what, the, and that's what they told us the Bible say. And since y'all never read the Bible to understand what the Bible not said, but what it was implying and trying to teach you. So now you pass that down. And now you done got to a generation that can read and comprehend. That got sense to say, that ain't what that means. Oh, so now we rebel. You're something wrong with us, y'all. This the general, you know the devil is a lie. When you, are, when you have people who are free in Jesus and you still bound. So there's a terrible dichotomy in the church of lie fighting truth. 
Because some people in the church who you say ain't got it got more than you got. I don't like this. I didn't ask you to like it. Amen. I bought this sermon on my way in. Amen. Praise the Lord. I didn't ask you to like this. Touch your neighbor. Say always walk in truth. Because if you walk in anything else, it's not God. Huh? He say, I got to hurry. I I'm going to leave everything else alone. It is that you protect truth. Let the church say truth. truth. Protect righteousness. Let the church say righteousness. And righteousness has to deal with your heart. Because it's a breastplate of righteousness. That being in a right relationship and being right by way of the standards of Christ comes from a heart place. Some folks just ain't got right in them. And I said this on Wednesday night, and since y'all wasn't there, let me go and say it again. And, and y'all kill me trying to justify folk who ain't got right in their hearts. When you pacify people in the church who don't have a heart of righteousness. Huh? You pacify people who don't have never been converted in their hearts. Now they got a whole lot in their heads according to Romans 10, 1, 2, and 3. Brother, my heart's desire and prayer for God for Israel that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. Come on, y'all read it at every revival. But not according to knowledge. Here we go. For they have gone about. Come on, Bible reader. To establish what they think is right. But have not yet submitted to the righteousness of God. So people will go around the church and look at people who don't look like them and say, you're wrong. You shouldn't have. Because in their heads, they've already established what's right. And so they got it in their heads. It has not gotten in the heart. Because in the heart, guess what? Because how you know it's not in their heart? Because when you tell them and explain to them the righteousness of God, you know what they tell you? They say, oh, I didn't know that. Never thought about it on that wise. Really? Wow, well, I, I'm, I'm going to have to nibble on that. That's pretty, wow, I, wow, that's enlightening me. No, you don't get that. You know what you get? No, I'm trying to tell you, and you ain't going to change my mind. I said it third, I said it on Wednesday, let me say it again. You dealing with a fool and you better leave a fool alone. I ain't got time for no more fools. Cause the longer I try to deal and convince a fool, I become foolish. Y'all ain't saying I'm done dealing with fools. You wanna go ahead with your mind and perish? Go ahead. How long you gonna deal with fools? How long you gonna try to convince fools? That's real. I'm not. Holy Ghost going to have to do that. Come on. Truth. He said protect that at all costs. Righteousness. Protect that at all costs. Here we go. Peace. Verse number 15. Your feet shod. With the preparation. Is it in your Bible? Of the gospel of peace. But he says, peace, protect peace. Don't let nothing invade your peace. Y'all don't hear me hear that. Hey man, you ain't sleeping at night, you grumpy, you grouchy, you, un, you, you, you uncomfortable. The devil is a lie. Hey man, let me tell you something. The moment Chester Brown III found peace, I refuse to lose peace. Because when you find something that's worth having, you won't let nothing come to make you lose it. And if you start losing and drifting away from it, you will quickly say, I got to eliminate everything in my life that's invading my peace. Because I'm not going to become a grouchy, grumpy man around here looking crazy with furrows in my face. How many of y'all feel like I feel that you're going to stop letting people, places, and things invade your peace? If you start messing with my peace, I'm going to have to go ahead and cut you off and cut it off.
because God said I'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind shake your neighbor's hand and say I ain't gonna let nothing mess up my peace I'm gonna walk in peace I'm gonna talk in peace I'm gonna live in peace I thank God for peace hey 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 how many of y'all can I get at least two or three or more of y'all here who thank God for peace Huh? Thank God for peace. And he said, you got to protect peace. He said, I'm giving you armor so you can protect your truth. I'm giving you armor so you can protect righteousness from your heart. I'm giving you armor so that you can protect your peace. I'm giving you armor so that you can protect your faith. Shield of faith. In verse number 16, and then protect your salvation. Helmet of salvation. And then 18, in verse 18, you will maintain a prayer life. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shield of faith. So you dressed. All right. In order to defeat this devil and get the way you need to go in this season I already told you you need the helmet of salvation right so are you doing hard head or soft head hard head that means put your hat on Deacon Kurt Patrick I went to his job when he was working outside of Greensboro past Greensboro I had to go pick up something that was important uh, for the church and when I got there he said ah oh, pastor oh, you can't come oh, you can't come, can't come no further because this rest of this zone is hard hat zone and God has, <laughs> God has entered you into a, a, into a season of your life that if you don't have a hard hat on, you're not going to be victorious. All right, so go and tell your neighbor, this is hard hat zone I'm in. A amen. That means everybody that's with me, around me, and hanging with me got to have on a hard hat. Amen. If you ain't got no hard hat, I'm going to send you away. Because you ain't going to understand what I'm talking, what I'm thinking, what I'm, what I'm doing, where I'm going. You're not going to feel it. A amen. And you got to have a hard hat. Let church say hard hat. Because what he says about the shield of faith, though, which is very significant, is that this shield is on your arm. And it is to, watch this, ward away the fiery darts of the wicked. He's, he, he's shooting them at you. So here's my question. So when the devil shoots, and when you watch, how many of y'all watch warrior movies? Y'all watch them? Okay, okay, okay. And, uh, okay. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a warrior with the shield on his arm? Have you ever seen him first start down here with it? Never. No. Go back and rewind. Look at your movies. It was, he, ne he never, the first attack of the enemy was never down here. It was always here because the first attack on your life is the head and you got to protect your head and you got to protect your head because there's a danger in losing your head that if the devil penetrate the place that he's pointing at it's actually going to take you out and he ain't going to have to worry about the rest of the body because he got the head. So therefore, I'm talking to you for the next for the next 13 minutes about you not losing your head now. Because you're up against the tactics of the devil. See, 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 the, the temptation, according to scripture, the temptation that you're up against is not uncommon to man. Because God always provides a way of escape. You ain't the only one going through. And you're not the only one who's also in transition of seasons. I mean, I'm in one. I'm in a major transition right now. And I've discovered for myself that the most important part for me to protect right now is my head. Want to know why? Because my head is what's been getting me in all the trouble. My head is what has been causing me to backslide. I don't have to tell y'all what the backslide is because y'all ain't ready for that. My head is what has been knocking me six steps back 
from four steps of progress. In other words, I make four steps of progress and I get knocked back to a negative two for all of my college and the other folk that can do your math. And it has nothing to do but nothing else but that I'm getting beat oh, in my head. Because the devil is after the head. He's, a, he's done it from creation. When you go to Genesis chapter 1, uh, Genesis chapter 2, and Genesis chapter 3, understanding him making man with power and dominion and authority, and he talks about that power in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10, that if you be strong in the Lord in the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God, that, that, that same dominion and authority that God gives in Genesis chapter, two, chapter 1 and chapter 2 to Adam, the head, but what happens in the garden is the serpent, Satan's protege, attacks head. And what you don't understand about the head is head is the central focus of government. Now, stop thinking about the city of Mecklenburg and, and Charlotte. I say the central point of government. In other words, you cannot govern your life with a wounded head. Let me, let me bother with you just for a minute because as a pastor, as a pastor, I've gone to and fro for, I, I've been a pastor now 25 years plus now. Excuse me, I've been a preacher 25 years plus now. I've been a pastor for about 18 of those. And I have spent, Nathan Graham, Dr. Williams, I have spent time with families who had members in ICUs, numerous occasions. And I've gone in and I see you. And as long as the head was all right, hope was still there. I've gone in, uh, Sister Evans, Sister Joyce, I've gone in and heard the doctor say, well, we're just going to do a heart transplant. I didn't heard them be able to replace everything from hips to hearts, lungs, so oh, well, you don't need you don't need but one kidney. We'll take that kidney. I'll give you a kidney transplant. They are able to replace everything in the body as long as the brain is still functioning. But the moment that the doctor walks in and says there's so much damage that the brain waves have stopped. I don't care how good the heart is. Don't care how good the lungs are. I don't care how good the eyeball and all that stuff is. I, I, I mean, the toe can be twitching, but the toe is only twitching because of nerves that are dying. But if the brain is dead, and say the brain dead, the rest of the body has no value to it. And I'm trying to tell you how important it is for you to protect. They, now, I'm not, I'm not only talking about heads of households, heads of, 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 of your jobs, and heads of your businesses. It goes beyond that. When, when you, the individual, got to make decisions, got to govern yourself. Amazes me how we can control everybody else but can't control us. How you can tell everybody else what to do but you can't tell yourself nothing right to do. Huh? How you can keep a control over people, but can't keep control over your own person. Huh? And let me tell you what has to happen. According to this text, you got to get dressed up. But when you get dressed up, the helmet is so important because, listen, I gave you three points. I'm only going with one. What you have to understand, here we go, is Satan is trying Watch this, through the head to get me to walk out of obedience. I'm in, I'm in Ephesians 6 and 10. See, here it is. Y'all don't see that the fact of that, the head and the helmet is so important because that's the only place that Satan has to operate. That's the only place that he can get you. That's, that's, that, 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 that's, that's what he really bothers with. That, that's how he gets all of us. You know what truth is. You know what the word is. But it's just something about when the devil done got in my mind. Mm. The, the word in Ephesians 6 and 12 Verse number 13, 
is stand. I'm going to take you slow and I'm going to sit down. Stand. I'll check it since you won't. I'll check it. <laughs> Therefore, hold on our God, verse 13, that ye may be able to withstand while you're under satanic attack, while he's strategized about you, so you be able to stand. Can you sure say stand? If you stand, that's obedience to God. But here's the problem. Go to point number three. The problem is the principalities plays games on my person. I didn't give you point number one, didn't give you point number two. The I went straight to point number three. That means I'm almost finished. The principalities are playing games on my person. Watch this. Because according to verse number 12, the principalities and the powers are in high places. A lot of y'all, I know y'all think that the devil is here and there. The devil is in the earth, but he, he, he floats within the atmosphere between earth and heaven. Are you understanding that? And so there are principalities and there are powers, the rulers, verse number 12, of the darkness of this world. Here we go. Spiritual wickedness in high places. So what happens, Tara, is the principalities and the tricks of the enemy plays on my mind to push me into disobedience to God. Because all God said was stand. But y'all don't understand the mindset and the strain mentally on obeying the word stand. Want to know why? Because you just put on all this armor. See, here's the deal. Here's the real truth. A lot of times, it's questionable whether the Lord can get you to get all dressed up with all this stuff and then don't do nothing. I mean, you mean to tell me you have an enemy in front of you and you got a sword in your hand and don't want to use it? See, and y'all, you know, see, ain't nothing like God putting you in the midst of people who don't like you and say that very one thing that will tee you off. And you got a sword in your hand, but I can't use it. See, and the real truth, the real truth, watch this, watch this. The real truth is, I've had the sword in my hand, and I used it. And the moment I used it, I messed everything up because the devil got the victory. See, see and a lot of y'all don't want to be honest with yourself that God can't trust you with a sword. Because you will swing it when he said don't do nothing. That if you grab the sword Boy, because your nerves and your mind, all of a sudden, man, you're, you're getting man. You can grab that thing and squeeze it. And see, here, here, here's the trouble. When in your mind you're saying, you just don't know, I could right now. I got the power in my hand right now. Or I could take this shield and just go straight across your jaw and dislocate your eyeball out of its side. You know, I done thought about, you know, y'all know I done thought about this stuff real, real good. You know, sometimes you standing in the midst of people and they right in your face and it's going through your mind. Everything right now I can really do to you right now. I can see, and I can't talk to fake people who don't, amen, who don't like to fight because I really like to fight. I just hadn't had a good fight in a long time. And the real truth be having these shoes on that's supposed to be a, a, a boots of peace. When I can raise some hell with them, I mean, really? I can kick up some dirt if I really want to? I'm going downtown with the drunks and with the, with the drunks and the thugs because y'all won't, won't be honest in the church. Give me some real transparency. See, and that's why you can't get no help in your life because you won't be honest with your temper and where you really are and how you really feel so God can really help you. It's a mind thing. Y'all don't understand, man, how many nights talking about pastor losing weight. Let me tell you why. 
It ain't because I, I don't want to eat. It's because I got to get my flesh under control. Watch this. I'm losing weight without even fasting. Because, well, I got to be disciplined enough in my mind. Y'all don't like this. And you have not, some of y'all can't identify with this because you hadn't went through this level of spirituality and this level of growth and this, this, this level of having to go to the next level of dimension. But let me tell you something, man. I, I, I have gotten off my knees from laying on the altar crying, Oh, God, yes, help me, help me. And then turning to help me into yes, Lord, only to walk out and have to stand before a devil that says, Come on. Why are you standing? You wimp. You know what you got? Look at all your arsenal. Look at everything you got. Come on. Do something. Your daddy would have done something. Huh? Would you do, do something? Only for me to not be strong enough in my mind. You know, I understand y'all had never had the moment. And I'm going to preach today. All y'all that got to go, y'all going to go. But I'm going to finish this. <laughs> I sat and waited on y'all. Y'all, <laughs> whatever. If this ain't for you, y'all going on and make your way. Y'all know where the exits are. But unless you've ever had that moment in your life to where it's after you move when God says stand, that you sat in disgust of yourself, because now, not only do you have the old mess, but you got a new mess you done started. And you're telling yourself, man, I knew better. Knew not to go to that hotel. I knew not to go to that place. I knew not to let them push me. I knew not to answer that phone call. I knew better. But when I was supposed to be being still, I moved. When I was supposed to shut my mouth, darn it, I just had to say something. I'm going to get you out of here. Let me tell you how to get out of here. Let me tell you how to get you out. Y'all want to get out of this? All right, that's how you get out of it. First thing you got to do is you got to cover your head. You got to make sure your head is always covered. See, you know, when you cover your head, that also speaks of lordship. And a lot of us have been saved because you accept Jesus as Savior, but a lot of us can't be saved because we won't accept him as a Lord. That's too much for a lot of y'all. Because you, you thought it was a complete package deal. No, it's not. That the real truth is a lot of us are satisfied. Y'all got to hear me on this. A lot of us are sat Let me go to my friendly side. Y'all not friendly over there no more. Over here, I want to be with friendly people. Y'all giving bad vibes on that side. Straighten that out and I'll come right back. <laughs> I don't feel like that. But a lot of us, listen, are going to be satisfied with just making it to heaven. Just sliding by. I mean, ain't no stars in the crown for that kind of stuff. Ain't no reward. You, I mean, because, because, because you live your life just saved. See, because the real truth is you can be saved by Christ, but not submitted to his lordship. I ain't no... That's too much for a lot of y'all. Because <laughs> lordship puts him in a proper position that says he rule and he reigns. And some of y'all ain't going to be submissive to nobody, not even to Jesus. Some of us ain't going to be submissive to nobody. Or some of us I, I, I ain't going to be submissive because when the Lord tell you right, you go left. When the Lord say up, you go down. You don't want to be honest about that. And it's all about lordship. That's why you got to keep your head covered. Make sure he's in the right position. Oh, be strong in the Lord. Right position, man. And when you're in the position of the Lord, verse number 10, you will be in the power, not of your might, I'm trying to teach y'all something. I know y'all 
y'all attention span that left you. I say, not in the power of your might, but the power of his might. That there's a part of you that has to submit to the lordship of Christ. And you have to stay covered. Can the church say stay covered? But not only must you stay covered, you must connect to your heavenly place. That's the only way you're going to defeat this. It's the only way you're going to get your mind right. I just closed up my book. Verse number 12, the devil, principalities, is in high places. Let me give it to you and let you go. So therefore, since he's in a high place, your high place has to be higher. You have to elevate yourself above his high place. And so you're very prone for defeat by way of your mind because you don't worship. You pray, but you're not a worshiper. And the type of battle you're up against requires more than prayer. Now, all y'all who don't like what I'm saying right now, it's okay. But somebody got to tell you that you got to go beyond prayer. Because a lot of y'all, that's why we're going to have prayer for, for those three weeks. Because a lot of y'all only know how to just blab your request out, but never enter in. You treat God like he's Christmas, Santa Claus. Put your request out there, and then when he don't answer every request on your Christmas wish list, you come to church mad like some of y'all are right now. And then when we start talking about worship God, you lost. Because the reason why you're lost is because, really, you're living a defeated life. We're gonna spend all, let me tell you, we're going to spend all year next year just talking about God. Because all, I want to give a shout out to all y'all tonight, all y'all today who say, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. But guess what? I don't. Because what I thought I knew about God, I don't know. What I thought I had him figured out, I don't. That's too much for a lot of y'all. Yeah, let's be honest. I serve him, Doc. But what I think, I know God enough. How can you know somebody who is so massive beyond your mind. How, how can you say you know, oh, I know the Lord. I'm, 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 I'm backing up off that nowadays. No, nah, I don't know him like I thought I knew him. Because when I think I done got him figured out, and when I think I done seen everything he got to show me, y'all ain't saying nothing. I say it. I said, when I think, I know how God is going to work this stuff out for me. He always finds a way to show me that I don't know him well enough. And I said, well, Lord, how? 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 How are you going to reveal yourself to me? How are you going to inflict upon me? And how are you going to give me self-discipline? He said, Brian, it goes beyond prayer. He says, because the devil is in a high place. So you have to have a worship that goes higher. Y'all got to go. But I'm going to ask you, I'm, to help me, I'm going to ask y'all 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 4. Paul says, I was caught up in a third heaven and what I could not understand in the natural God had to get me in a worship place. Yeah. Had to get me up in a level that was beyond where the devil could come. I say, he had to get, give me something to climb on. I mean, he had to get me be above the place that the enemy could get to me. And a lot of y'all can't be victorious because you have not figured out how to climb above the devil's high place. 
it amazes me if your high place is only high enough to look at the devil in the face. I'm trying to tell you there's a whole lot more to God that you don't know. Put that back up, put that back up, put that back up. Because, because, because when I got up there, what I couldn't understand in the natural, he showed me through by way of revelation in the spiritual. I was in a realm that was so high that I couldn't tell what I was out of my body. I was caught up into a paradise and I heard stuff. God revealed unto me some stuff in that realm that I can't even tell you. Now, why can't I tell you? Because you ain't been there. So you wouldn't understand. It'll frustrate you. What fuels my faith and fuels my forward progress in life, if I tell you the revelations, it will frustrate you if you have never been in that realm. If you've never seen and felt God. You got to elevate your worship. You got to elevate it. You got to elevate it. You got to not be driven by your feelings and stand on the facts. A lot of y'all too emotional. And the devil is playing on your emotions so much. I've been guilty of that. He's played on your feelings so. Some of y'all don't come to church because you're all in your feelings. Some of y'all, you know, just treat, I mean, just, I mean, anybody gets you moved left or right. My God. But let me tell you something. I'm t according, according to 2 Corinthians 10 and 7, that you cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself. I got somebody to preach with me. That exalts itself against the knowledge and the truth of God. You got cancer? They telling you you got cancer? Truth of the word. But when your imagination, the devil start playing on your imagination, they say, you feel the tumor? You're feeling a little awkward, aren't you? Now you let that go to your head, which now doubts the truth that you already know. And you now get in a slowful, somber, because you didn't got in your feelings, which is now the devil's workshop. You pray, but let me ask y'all a question that y'all can't handle. What happens when praying ain't enough? What happens when praying ain't getting it? Y'all, because some of y'all lying. But I found consolation in prayer. You got up from that altar worried. By the time church was out, You just ashamed to say you doubted God on that level. You are just ashamed. There's been many days I prayed, and ain't never wrong with my faith. Because I'm in touch with my humanity and my divinity. But there's been many times that I prayed, and you know how we do, turn it over to Jesus. And I felt all right for them few minutes. But by the time I had to go back and stare it in the face, y'all don't like this preacher. By the time I had to go back and look at it square footed in the face, what I prayed about. <laughs> so what, what, what when just praying ain't enough? I'll tell you what. When you got to elevate your worship to a level that puts you in a realm, when you lose consciousness of yourself in God to a freedom, and I'm, I'm talking, God Almighty, oh God, and I'm talking to so many people here who are still so bound by religion and tradition, and I'm praying that the yoke and your hard ground be broken. And that you, 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 you know, you, you're lost if I say prostrate. You're lost if I tell you uh, the freedom of worship. You know, everybody worship in their own way. 
and that, 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 that's a liberty. But when you say I'm worshiping my own way and it ain't worship at all. Because worship will change you. Worship will put you in a realm or put you in a high place above principalities so that your mind can get the therapy that you can meditate in a place and in a calm, cool realm of God that the meditation is medication for your mind. And the devil can't handle you in a worship realm. I gotta go. Everybody's standing. I gotta go. I gotta go. I said the devil can't handle you when you up there. When you up there. When you up there. When you up there. I let this marinate on you. When you up there. When you up there. When you up there. When you up there. So that suicidal thoughts will not invade your mind. The mind to quit. Put up for me. Put up for me. Verse number 13 of Ephesians 6. Put it up. Y'all have put that up. And I know you're getting it now. Go back to Ephesians 6 and 13. I want to show you something. Because there's the danger of you moving when God told you to stand. But if you don't find a worship place to incorporate with your prayer place, if you don't find a worship place, a realm of worship to incorporate with your praying. Some, see, let, me, let me tell you something. Until you have prayed yourself into worship, until you have prayed yourself into a realm of worship, until you have prayed yourself, look at this. Taking you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. I want to give a shout out to all of y'all who finna move and you're supposed to be standing. Because look at the verse. And having done all to stand. Your worship is so lackadaisical and so low until you're about to get out of God's will by moving when he says stand. And the reason why he says stand right now is because you hadn't done all you could to stand. You have not exhausted. You mean one hiccup on the job you're looking for? Are you sure? Have you done all? Have you done all? And I want to give a quick shout out to all of y'all in here today who are so used to running. You run from everything. You won't, you won't I mean, relationships you run. Problems, you run. Because we all run. All us run. All us run to something. All us run to somebody. All us run. Run to sex. Run to the arms of somebody else. All us run. Run to liquor, to drink. Because I need to run for a minute. I just need to run away from that. That's too much for me to handle, too much for me to face. Let me run. Run to gambling. All us run to something. All us run to something. Run, run, run back to get another fix in your arm. Because that addiction helps me run. That, that other place that, that place I can go, that person I can go to, that soothes that area of my life. I run. But God told me to tell you, no more running. No more running. No more running. I've asked you to stand. I ask you to stand. If you stand, God says, I fight. No more running. I'm letting you go. I'm letting you go. I told God I'm I'm done running. Scared to face what I don't think I can fix. So I ain't asked you to fix nothing. I asked you to stand. Stand. 
and do everything you can. Just stand there. Just stand. How many applications are you going to put out there? Because when you get to that job, something else going to happen. You're going to be looking to run again. When you're going to stand still long enough for God to fix something. How about both shot? When you're going to stand long enough to let God do what God said he would do for your children and your family and your life. So you're going to run again, huh? Run, you're going to run, I mean, you know, I run from Johnson to Wales to Central Piedmont, then I run to a and then I run to technicals. How, when are you going to let God fix the issue that continues to keep you running? He said, I ask you to do one thing. Just stand. But standing takes mental responsibility. So I got to worship, pray and worship, worship and pray, so I can keep the devil out of my mind. Because what the devil will make me do is move and run. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you now for standing. Thank you now for standing. Thank you now for standing. Not running to drugs, telling the temptation of the devil, not running to left, right, east, west, north, south. But God, thank you for standing now. Thank you for a man that's standing here with all this dog on armor on, heavy as it is. But I make a declaration to you to obey you one more time stand I'll stand cry and stand sob stand feel stupid sometimes but I promise you I won't move because if I stand God I understand you'll fight my battle and the standing will work my patience and I'm going to get something out of the deal also I'm going to get endurance I'm going to get meekness. I'm going to get long-suffering. I'm going to get joy for my journey, hope for my hang-ups, injection for my infection, favor for my faults, grace for my guilt. So I decided to stand now, God. So we thank you now for everyone today that's standing, not on their feet, but standing with a declaration in their minds that we'll stand. So God, I thank you now. Seal us until the day of your coming. And we thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen.